This morning we're going to be starting on a little bit of a, uh, a week series on the seven last words of Christ from the cross. The first one I want to deal with is when Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. This is an original song I'd like to sing for you this morning. I wrote it many years ago. I got the idea of what if your home and your house was built right along the side of the road where you had visibility of everybody that was traveling up to that hill. You could actually see the hill where Jesus was crucified. You could sit on your front porch and watch the whole thing happen. And this song was entitled, Father, Forgive Them. They Know Not What They Do. From the window of my home I looked today As I stood there A stranger Came walking my way On his shoulder I noticed A cross was born His clothes were Tattered and torn There was blood upon his forehead The thorns on his brow The stripes on his back I can see them right now The crowd was laughing and jeering Making fun of that man Someone struck him With the palm of their hand And Jesus said Father, forgive them They know not what they do When they do it to me That's why I'm dying on the cross of Calvary Just to give them salvation So rich and so free You know as I stood there I saw them journey Up that long winding road Then he stumbled beneath his boot I saw a man whose name was Simon come passing that way and they compelled him to bear the cross the rest of the way you know they took that man named Jesus drove a huge spikes down through his hand why they nailed him to the cross, I cannot understand. Yet as I watched in the pain and sorrow, at the ending of the day, I saw his mouth move. I listened to hear what he'd say. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do when they do it to me. They also do it to you. I know that I love them. And put them nails in my hand. Why they did it. I can't understand. You know, then they took that man named Jesus. They drove huge spikes down through his hand. And why they nailed him? 
to the cross. I could not understand. Yet as I watched in pain and sorrow at the ending of that day, I saw his mouth move. I listened to hear what he would say. And he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do when they do it to me. They do it to you. I love them, Father. That's why I'm dying on the cross of Calvary. Just to give them salvation so rich and so free. Forgive them. Well, the message of forgiveness is an everlasting message. It wasn't just something that Jesus talked about. It was something that he put into action. I can't quite imagine that kind of love and mercy and grace. But I know everywhere I read in the Bible where man's calamity and man's disaster is where mercy walks in. Mercy walks in. And Jesus said, Father, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. This segment of the seven last sayings of Jesus from the cross is about forgiveness. That's probably pretty obvious from chapter to read would be Luke 23 and verse 34. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Huh. Isn't that what Christianity is all about? I mean, Jesus is hanging on the cross. And instead of letting the enemy take over his mind and anger taking over his heart, mercy walks in. And he said, I love them. That's why I'm dying. Please forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. Mm. Forgiveness. I have to ask myself at this Holy Week how readily and how often do I offer that same kind of forgiveness to other people. Is it hard? Is it difficult? Am I reluctant? Well, I know it's a constant challenge, and I know it won't happen unless you make it happen. And I know you can't make it happen without being totally in love with the Lord and really, really realizing how much he's forgiven you. Once you get that firmly planted in your head and your heart, you'll want to forgive other people the way that the Lord has forgiven you. Hmm. Jesus asks the Father to forgive those that tortured him. It's almost like he was turning his pain into gain. It's almost like he was turning his hurt into healing. It's almost like he was turning his sorrow into sympathy and a shout. Hmm. I have to ask myself this. I have to ask you this to be honest to the word of God. Are there any limits to what you would forgive? In your heart, is it conditional? 
Are there any limits to it? Not with our master. The thief on the cross beside him touched his heart and love and mercy walked in. Today you'll be with me in paradise. The Roman soldiers that were gambling over his garment at the bottom of the cross while he laid there naked, while he, while he was hung there naked, nothing but a loincloth. How could you bring yourself, ask the Father to do anything other than wipe them out, destroy them? They don't deserve a Savior. Not Jesus. Mercy walked in. Hmm. Are there any limits to your forgiveness, to your mercy and your grace that you offer? As Jesus followers, there's nothing that reveals humility more than just getting down on our knees before the Lord and be willing to put our fists down and our arms out to forgive. Hey Amen, it's okay, I forgive you. Genuinely forgive you, just like it never happened. I have found out something in my life. I need forgiveness. I want forgiveness. I desire forgiveness. If you put your heart to that, forgiving without limitations or restrictions, and really praying that prayer, Lord, help me to be a forgiver. Something extraordinary is going to happen in your heart and your life. I know this because it's happened to me. You start to see yourself knowing that it's far better to forgive whether people ask for it or not. Because if you don't, you become the victim. But if you go ahead and forgive, you become the victory. Totally forgive. No limitations. There are some situations where you would be wise. The Apostle Paul deals with this in the epistles. That if people are deliberately bombarding your ministry and your witness for Christ, you'd just be better off to show mercy and grace and forgiveness and to move on. Jesus even talked about that when he said, if you're not received in people's homes when you go to preach the gospel, just leave the city, shake the dust off your shoes and move on. No word does he tell us to not forgive. Somehow we have the wrong idea about forgiveness that when we forgive someone for trespassing, we have to either get even or spread rumors about what they have done to us or put ourselves on guard. Just totally forgive and let it go. On guard, I would say this, somebody that's causing you unhealthy drama in your life, if you decide that that's not the way you choose to live for the rest of your life, 
still do it with a heart of forgiveness. Don't do it as enemies. I know people that have been divorced and they have reestablished relations or they've reestablished us another relationship and their lives really look good. But when they talk to their children about the person that gave birth to their children to their child child, they refer to those people as your dad or your mother. That's not the way you talked about them when you were in love with them. They have a first name. I'm messing around right now. I know I am. It would show the forgiveness in your heart and communicate forgiveness if you would use the child's mother or father, their first name. That would show the kids, I don't want to live in hatred in my heart. I want to live with forgiveness in my heart. Does that make any sense to you? It won't happen unless we decide to do it. Forgiven be forgiven. You won't ever forgive without it coming back to plant a seed in your heart. It's a good seed. I wrote down here, kneel or peel. <laughs> kneel or peel. Father, there's people out there today in my listening audience They're having a hard time forgiving someone that's hurt them, someone that's betrayed them, someone that's demeaned them. Help us to know we're the most like you when we offer forgiveness. And help us to know that in the great Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, if you forgive, Others, your Heavenly Father will forgive you. If you don't, he won't. Help us to be forgivers, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd love to hear from you today. I'd love you to, to know that you took the challenge this morning to be a forgiver. And, and I'd like, maybe someone's got a testimony of how that's happened in your life. And you have proved that that's the right way to go and the right choice to make. Um, if nothing else, just, uh, please, if you listen to this, um, I want to know you listen to it on YouTube or on mountaintop, uh, with Charlotte or a uh, mountaintop Ministries. Just, uh, if nothing else, just check it off and with a heart or whatever. And, uh, but if you'd like to make a comment on how you forgave and it produced good results in your life, feel free to do it. Have a great holy week. God bless you.